Hi and welcome to the third part in this video tutorial series. In the last two parts we created a landscape material that now looks like this. It has procedural puddles and it has, a, uh, has different materials that we can blend between. Uh, if you haven't watched the first two parts I recommend you do so. I'm gonna put links to them right here. Um, in this part we're gonna add tessellation and displacement to this material. Be aware though that this is going to be an expensive material once you add tessellation to it. So only do this if you're aiming for high-end graphics and if you know that your user base can handle it. Uh, what I recommend on doing and that what we are doing in our game Sane is uh, we have two versions of the landscape material. One with tessellation and one without it. And we use the one with tessellation only on ultra settings. So let's get right to it. So opening up our landscape material that we created in the last two parts. By the way, you can add tessellation in almost the same way to all your materials. The only different thing that we do for the landscape material is we're going to make the tessellation based on the camera distance. But let's get to that later. So looking at our material, the first thing we got to do is we got to change some of the material attributes. So click in an empty space. Go to your settings, to your details panels, scroll all the way down, tessellation. Now we want to enable tessellation, so put it to P and triangles, enable crack free, free displacement, now we're ready to go. Let's, at the moment we have uh, material attributes enabled, so let's disable that real quick. It's all the way up here, because we're going to need our word displacement and our tessellation multiplier. So, to make our material work the same way it did before, we're going to need to break these results right here. Break material attributes. And now we're going to have to rewire these. So, base color, metallic. Specular, roughness, emissive color, even though we're not using it, maybe you are. Normal, and ambient occlusion down here. We don't need the other ones. We're not using any pixel depth offset, and we're gonna get our world displacement and simulation multiplier from different values. Let's move that over here, and let's give it a comment to output so that we know what's going on here. Now, let's add the tessellation first. For the tessellation, what we need is our camera position, because we want to have the tessellation. Let me go into wireframe right here. We want the tessellation, uh, if we look at the grid of the landscape, we want it based on the camera position, because what Unreal usually does with tessellation, it just takes the object uh, in distance to the actor that we possess, and starts tessellating it. Uh, if we do this to the landscape, it's going to tessellate all the way back there. And if you have a bigger landscape than I have, it's going to be a, a million polygons. It's going to be insane. So we don't want that. We only want to tessellate it around the camera in a like a circle or something. So in a distance to the camera, not the whole object. So going back here, we're going to get our camera position. There it is. We're also going to get our our absolute world position. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take our camera position and subst subtract the absolute world position. And this we are going to use uh, with a vector length node. Which basically, if you look into that node, it basically just takes the distance. Now what we want to do, we want to add some some control over this. So at the moment we basically have a, a distance from our camera position to an absolute world position. And now we're going to take the free vector and we're going to subtract from it. Oh, and real quick, make sure you're inputting this into the free vector as well. So, this subtract, let's create a 
scalar parameter uh, by pressing and holding one and clicking on empty space on the canvas. Let's put that into our B. So this we're going to convert to a parameter and call it the offset. And a value of zero is okay. So what this parameter is going to do is, and with this we can control from the camera position if we want to offset the tessellation effect. So if we don't want it to happen right around the camera, but maybe a little bit before that or further back. That's what that parameter is going to end up doing. You might not even need that. If you have like a first person game or something, you don't need it, but I think it's kind of handy to have. So, and then we're going to divide this. And we're going to divide it with another scalar parameter. Look at it in here. And let's convert it to another parameter. And let's call this fade distance. Let's give it a value like a thousand or something. So this is the actual meat. This is the, the really important uh, parameter because this is going to define um, how far the tessellation is gonna going to affect the landscape. So and that's almost it. Let's clamp this value just to make sure it stays uh, between zero and one. And what I like to do, uh, instead of just plugging this into our tessellation multiplier, actually let me move this over a bit, I like to use this as a alpha for a lerp. So add a lerp node, put it in the alpha, and add two more scalar parameters. Convert them to parameters. And this one has a default value of 1. Oh, and this one of 0. Let's give them name first. So this one is going to be the far translation. And this one is going to be the near. Translation. Actually, let me just type this. There we go. And like I said, this one's zero, this one one. So now we also have control over how much of a translation we want going on. Um, so, okay. <laughs> we have that radius now, right? Which is a thousand at the moment. And in this thousand units, we're going to have full translation set at one. And behind that, we're going to have zero. But now that we have these parameters, we can actually increase, even in the far distance, the tessellation or decrease it r right around the camera if you don't want to have the full effect. So that's what these are for. Let's group them. Let's select all of them and add a group for them. Let's call it tessellation. There we go. And now we can use this value. Let's comment this so that we know what's going on. And let's put that into our tessellation multiplier. And I noticed that I made a small error, which is the far and the near tessellation, and these are backwards. So let's rewire them. So the far tessellation has to be B, and near tessellation has to be A. We're going to apply it, and it's going to compile again. Okay, the material is compiled, and looking at our viewport, it should look something like that. Of course, only if you enable wireframe, which is great, because it's exactly what we want. So we get nice tessellation near the camera, and in the distance, we don't get any, which is what we want. Opening up our material instance, we can now start to fine-tune this effect to our liking. So going down here to our tessellation effect, we have the fade distance, and with this we can change how far into the background our tessellation is going to affect the landscape. And of course we have the far tessellation with which we can increase or decrease the tessellation in the distance. And we have the near tessellation which allows us to affect the tessellation 
in this fade distance. So let's put them back to 1 and 0. And of course we have the offset which allows us to shift this effect. Put that back to 0. Save this. And now we're going to add some actual height information because at the moment it isn't really displacing anything, right? It's still flat. So let's go in here and let's move this tessellation down a bit because we're going to need some more space. Let's move the output over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the height and multiply that. with our vertex normal in world space. So what this would end up doing, this is actually the only thing we need. We could plug that right in, but I like to do a little, uh, one, one or two extra steps to this. So looking at one of the textures in our material, uh, I quickly open one up, like this one for example, and we want to Look at the height map information. Remember, it's in the green channel. Uh, we have white and black areas that kind of show us uh, how high or far down the vertex should be. And at the moment, when doing it this way, just multiplying the vertex normal on it, we're just going to push everything up. So going from the or this height, it's only going to get pushed up. Which is going to cause some issues if you have like persons walking on this and stuff. Their feet are going to start to intersect with the environment a lot because it's only going to get pushed up. So what we want, we want the white areas to get pushed up and the black areas to get pushed down. And so we're going to do, we're going to do this a little bit different. We're not just going to multiply it like that. What we're going to do is we're going to use this one. So our height result. And we're going to use it as an alpha for a lerp. So alpha for a lerp. And then we're going to create a scalar parameter to the value of 1. And convert to a parameter. Call this one the height. And now what we're going to do is we're going to lerp between this one and a 1 minus of it. There we go. And we're go going to multiply this with the vertex normal. So now we're actually taking the, the black and white image and use this on that value. Actually, this can be 0. And push it up and down. Use this an alpha for that and then multiply our vertex normal with it. And now this could go into world displacement. However, what I found is that with our displacement, uh, kind of already, our displacement is going to stop somewhere around here, right? And it's going to fade out. At the moment it's not really fading out. Oh, now we can see it, like, there, it's, it's fading out, kind of. And uh, with the full displacement value in this area, it's going to look really off. Because it's going to try to do the same thing it's doing right here, over here, with way less polygons. So, let's do something else. Let's take this value right here and multiply it. With our lerp from our tessellation multiplier, which is a value between 1 and 0, right? So we're kind of controlling this effect with our tessellation multiplier. And now we're going to take this put it in our world displacement. So as the tessellation grows weaker in the distance, the displacement is also going to grow weaker. Let's give this a comment. Call it displacement. And I also just noticed that I'm still spelling tessellation wrong. This has a double L, right? So let's add that real quick. Horrible. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, let's apply this, compile it, and once we're done compiling, we can see if we actually did everything correct. So, our material is compiled, and now let's check a look. It's not doing anything at the moment. 
that's because in our material instance, we still need to set our height value. Oh, no, I actually forgot to put that into that tessellation group, but whatever. So going in here, we can now adjust the height of our displacement. There we go, that's looking nice. Let's go back a lit. Go, oh, that's, that's way too strong, obviously. Let's try something like 15. Well, looks kind of nice. So that's actually everything. Now we have translation on our material and it's in and it's and it uh, changes depending on the distance to our camera. So it's only brrr, where the camera is close and it stops over there and we can control this with the fade distance and we can also adjust the translation of the background, the foreground and so on. So I guess that's it for this tutorial. Um, sorry if the mic quality isn't too great. Our old mic broke down and this one is a replacement so uh, I'm not sure how this is gonna sound. And yeah let me know if you have any more questions. Of course uh, like and subscribe if you like this video and if you want to see more of them. Uh, that really helps us out if we know that you guys enjoy these videos. And uh, the next video is going to be a tutorial about our moss and rock shader that we uploaded a few weeks ago. Uh, people really seem to dig it, so we decided to make a tutorial about that one. Uh, you can expect it actually probably some sometime around the end of this week, uh, maybe start of next week. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, hope this works for you. If not, let me know in the comments. That's it for this video. Uh, see you. Bye-bye.